for the avenue of prayer. Pray at all times. God says pray without ceasing. And we ask each other to pray. You pray for me, not a selfish thing. I pray for you. And we going to sit back and watch God change things. And watch God change things. Glory to God. Now, God, I thank you now because I feel you now. You know what I need. And I ask you to supply my need. I stand here, oh God, asking for your help. Asking for your anointing. And I believe you hear me, God. Because you, oh God, in every place, beholding everything. And I know you looking at little old me. God, you know my strengths. You know my strengths. And God, you know what I need. And I need you today. Saints, I need God today. And I praise him because I know I have him. I feel him now. Hard it on hey, hey. But God, I praise you for everything. I thank you for my ends and my outs. Because I'm not in it alone. But God, I have your ever presence. And God, it's by faith that I have in thee. That I live and breathe, God, and know that everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Because that's what your word says. God, we are here in the numbers. And there are so many needs, oh God, that stand before you. And it is my prayer, God, that you meet the need of those who came to this house, to this house, God, to this lighthouse, to your house, where the word of God says that if you can just look toward the holy temple, your deliverance would be nigh. Now, God, meet the needs. And help me, oh God, not to be so selfish as to just think on what I'm into. Realizing, oh God, that the needs here are many. And I ask God that you come in with your anointing and not anyone leave the way they came. But God, give us new faith, ever increasing faith to stand upon your word, your word that never lies. Oh God, and knowing that you are an infinite God that can make everything happen. We stand on your word. We live in your word. We breathe in your word. God, that's the saints' only hope is your word. That's the concrete that we stand on. Hallelujah, that we know is unchangeable. And I praise you now. Glory to God, you may be seated. God bless you, saints. I'm glad to be here this morning. Glad to be on the side of the living. Hallelujah. I praise him for being all that he is to me. And I thank him because he's good to me in everything. I praise him, God. I praise you, God, because you know my insufficiencies and you know where I am right now. Glory to God. Now, saints, if you pray, the Lord will do what he's going to do in this house. I need my glasses from somewhere. I want to assure you, saints, that no matter what you are going through, that as I live and breathe, God will take care of you. As sure as I live and breathe, God will take care of us. We're sort of living in a season now where it looks like God ain't winning. You know, I know where you are. Oh yes, I have all the faith in the world in God. But the enemy is trying to make us think that God's not listening. But he's a liar. He's the father of lies. There's no truth in him. God hears and he sees. 
our faith and our steadfastness is being challenged like never before. But I tell you, what we need to do as saints, we need to contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. We need to ask God to take us back to the day when we could confess our faults one to the other and pray one for another. Can't do that no more, mother. Because the saints are not like they used to be. The only way we can just sort of express the things that are going on in our lives is we have to tell you to pray for my unspoken request. It's unspoken because I know that if I tell you, you gonna go tell somebody. Lord, help us to go back. Help us to go back and help us to see the strengths that are in the church if we would only obey the plan that God has for the church. I'm very concerned about the body of Christ, and I'm going to stop now and give honor to the clergy, to the saints, to all of the pastoral assistants, and certainly to Bishop. I hope he's listening. And I thank God for this opportunity, and I thank you for all that you are to me. But as I said, I'm very concerned about the church and how we look at the church and the things that are going on in the church. The time is of such where people have no more faith in the church because those fleshly things that God warns us against have taken over the church. Sexual perversion, anything that you can name is happening in the church. We know that God has a plan for the church. And it certainly is not those things that I just mentioned. But the one thing that I want to leave with you today is that the church of God will prevail. The church will survive. Upon this church, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. There will be some assaults against the church, as we see going on now. Assaults, but they will not prevail. We have to stand in that. Lawsuits all over the world against the church. But these things must be. God has got to weed out the wheat from the chair, from the chaff, and everything begins at the church. You get the church right, you get the world right. It begins right here. And there's just a sifting. God is just sifting. And we've got to be able to stand. Doesn't matter who it is, if it's unholy, it's just unholy. Must always remember there's always going to be war between the flesh and the spirit. The word of God said there's enmity between the flesh and the spirit. And you know the one thing about the flesh? The flesh has an insatiable desire. Nothing satisfies the flesh. That's why those of us who are in the spirit have to be mindful of the things that are in the spirit and live and walk in the spirit. Being mindful that you have an enemy. Satan, the roaring lion, lion, walking to and fro in the earth, seeking whom he may devour. And every time he plucks off a saint, he causes our witness to water. People think they can come to church and do everything that they do in the world, but it won't happen. God had a plan for his church. And I thought about it, I said, Lord, how can I 
get into what I want to get into. God said, just go to the beginning. You go to the beginning, you get a real concept of what God meant for his people. He set everything in order and told us what to do. And we know how the enemy came in and caused unbelief and sin to enter into the world. And that became the beginning of why we are where we are now. But it was through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, bringing about redemption that our change came about. We seem to be suffering things in the church that we used to didn't have to suffer. But the word of God tells us to think it not strange concerning what? The fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened unto you. The things that are happening, God knows they are happening, but it's those things that's going to help you make it. Being in the church, as Bishop says, is not like being in a nursing home. You're going to have some ups and you're going to have some downs. But we live knowing that there's no temptation taken us but such as is common to man. But God, who is faithful, will make a way of escape that we may able to bear it. You never get away from it, but you'll just be able to bear it. And I say to you that while you're going through your trials, if you can just find your praise, you can praise your way through. Just find your praise, and you can praise your way through. We know how even the scriptures give us things to, be, to base or to stand on the things that I'm saying. You know how Leah had all of those children for Jacob and he still didn't appreciate her. And when she came to the end of herself and knew that those things that she was trying to do to cause him to love her, she forgot about him and start thinking about herself. Her last son she named Judah, which means praise. That was her way of escape. Saints, praise is our way of escape. You know, it's a strange thing. When you're going through, you tend to be more faithful to God. It takes you higher in your faith and in your expectation because our eyes are only on God. We know that he's the only one that can bring us through. Somebody sent me a little poem since I've been going through, and it simply says, it's in the valley that I grow. So when you're in the valley, you can't do nothing but look. And when you look up, you see Jesus. He says, my redemption draweth nigh. You look up. I remember once when we went on vacation to California, we were down in the desert, and it was so hot, very, very hot we were driving. But as we start climbing, the higher we climb, the cooler it got. I'm saying to you that when you are down, it's in that valley that God intends for you to grow. He does not intend for you to just lay back and just wallow in being down because we know that we serve a God of the hills and the valley. And when God allows you to have a valley experience, it's something for you to learn. I have learned so much about God in my valley experience that I'm going through. I'm finding out that he can meet your need wherever you are. He can dry tears that seems like is an overflowing fountain. And his word can give you consolation like you've never had before. The word of God is powerful. It is powerful. 
And it can come like a soothing salve when you read it and just heal the hurt. How many of you have been disappointed and feel like God just ain't coming? I know you've been there. You said, God, where are you? Where have you hid yourself? We pray. I'm praying about that situation on my job, and it's getting worse. I'm praying about my finance. They talk about laying me off. My children gone crazy. I'm praying, and you don't hear me. If you haven't been there, I have. We feel like we transgress against God when we ask questions. But God knows it's in your heart. You might as well ask. As Jesus died on the cross, he asked, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? We have a right to ask. Sometimes you're in it so long until you almost feel like Job's wife. I know y'all ain't been there. You know, you might feel like that, but you're not as foolish as Job's wife was. But there are times when you feel like I might as well just be out there doing everything everybody else is doing because it seems like they are prospering like Green Bay trees. But that prosperity is only temporary. It is only temporary. Because we know the things that are of God have permanence. So we ask God to give us to stand in the day of adversity when the enemy has an all out assault against the church. The church, this is God's house. Nobody can tear it down, but it has weakened. The foundation is weakening and it's only because we are not where we ought to be. We become so laxed and so laid back that we think it don't take all of that. But God's word said, be ye holy for I am holy. That will never change. You cannot come to church after you've done all your carousing on Saturday night with whomever you wanted to do it with, don't mind being seen, and then come to church and expect the power of the Lord to come down. God is not pleased, saints. Oh, we are praying. But God not hearing some of our prayers because our lives are so ragged. Our lives are so ragged. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman availeth much. We ask for faith. We ask for faith. But nothing you're asking for is getting through because you're not even asking, believing in your heart. Faith means you believe it no matter what. No matter what you believe it. If faith says step out, you step out not knowing what you're gonna step on. But faith says it's going to be all right. You know, and I look and when I read the scripture, it seems as those people who, as though those people who were really not really in God, not Israelites, they tend to have had more faith than the children of Israel. You know the soldier whose son, he didn't even feel like God was worthy to go into his house, but he asked God to save his son, and God did it because of his faith. I wish that I had the faith like the woman with the issue of blood who just felt like if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be all right. I wish, this, I'm talking about me now. I wish that I had the faith of the Shunammite woman 
whose son laid home dead. And her faith says, it is well. That's the kind of faith that God wants us to have. I wish that I had the faith of Paul, who had a thorn in the flesh that was unnameable, but un apparently it was very painful. And after he sought God, how many is seek him and just don't feel you get no answer? He finally concluded that your grace is sufficient for me. In other words, God, if you end it with me, I can take it. As long as I know that you are on board. Do you know whether he's on board or not? If you know he's on board, you can just rest in him and ask God forever increasing faith. We have faith, but if you don't build upon your faith, then it won't grow. You've got to build on it. You have to always know or find out what the plan God has. God's plan was for us to live in paradise. Don't want nothing, don't have no need for nothing. But when we got in self, you know, when, and, and men, you know, you all are so vulnerable. So vulnerable. And women, we can almost get them to do anything. <laughs> And I, I, I have a real problem with a woman, and some of us just like that, got everything and still ain't satisfied. Got everything and still curious. Got everything. The one thing about it, men, you have to be real careful when you got a curious woman. It's just our nature to be snoopified. <laughs> we gonna look around. And you sure can't go sleep on the job. You can't close your eyes now. It's just our nature. The plan that God had, it was because of Eve that it was violated. I don't understand for the life of me how Adam could have gone to sleep and let that woman do so much stuff. <laughs> I don't understand that. If he had been on his job, he wouldn't have got messed up. <laughs> and when he got messed up, it was just too late. Now here's a woman got everything, ain't got to worry about no other woman. Ain't got to worry about no money. Ain't got to worry about what she gonna eat. And ain't got to worry about no clothes. Just walk around naked. Got nothing to worry about, just naked. And she wasn't satisfied. So, because we are so inquisitive, she, and, 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 and I just got to believe the devil was looking good. Now you got to remember, and I might be wrong, you Bible scholars can correct me, but I don't think Satan was down on his belly until after these things happened. That's what I think. And I just think Satan was walking around with his thigh and said, You know, but you got to remember, no matter how fine Satan is, he's a devourer, and he seeks to destroy you. So when this fine Satan that's located in 369 G.E. Patterson Avenue walks around, you got to put your guard up. We got some Satans in here, young ladies. Got to put your guard up. Because it is his desire to tear you down. And he's going to always make you think what you got ain't good enough. It's something better. Now, you got a man taking care of you, and you don't want to work because you know nowadays women don't work. Sister Patterson don't work. 
Sister Patterson have worked 40 years. Believe me. Just like the Lord says to the men, if you don't work, you don't eat. Women, we got to get off of this thing where we so cute we can't do nothing but sit down and wait on a man to take care of us. I'm talking about the things that'll keep the church together. They said a family that prays together stays together. And the only way that's going to happen is going to be some submission on both parts. Submission on both parts. Submission don't mean I give, my, I give up and you just do what you want to do. And I ain't that crazy. But I'm going to do everything within the confines of this book. And I expect you to do that. Adam violated the promise that God made to him. And then lied about it. That's what's happening today. The promises that God have made to all of us, if we would adhere to them, we will be blessed and everything around us will be blessed. And that thing just trickled on down. Sin, I'm talking about after that. Men had to work by the sweat of their brow. Women had to bring forth children. And every time you get mad about how you hurting when y'all delivering and going on, you ah! And then y'all said, well, you know, it's all worth it when they come out or whatever. But I say to you, don't blame the man. Some of y'all just get mad at your husbands while y'all having them babies. Just get mad at them. You know, just don't even want to see him. He in the delivery room with that stuff all wrapped around his face watching you. And you want to have a, a gun and boom, boom, boom. <laughs> shoot him down for all that pain you in. I said, blame it on Eve. Ain't no need to blame in the man. Just blame it on Eve. The plan of God was not to suffer the things that we suffer now. We are suffering the things because sin entered in. But the one good thing about God, he does not leave us without a way out. When sin entered in, then God provided that way of escape that I spoke to you a little earlier about. In all of our lives, sin crept in. None of us came in here holy. Nobody has a right to judge anybody else from how they look or how they whatever, whatever. You have no right to do that. You have no right to make me feel like I'm less than a woman because I don't have the attributes that you call beauty. And I will not allow you, I will let no one, nobody allow me to feel bad about myself. If you don't want me, that's your loss because I got everything going on. That's your loss. Amen. Because the thing about it, you know, and it's really, it's really strange, you know, men got the thing over that they decide. Now, I want you to do as we normally do when Mother Diola comes to do the second mile giving. And aside from that, I want you to give your very best. I want to commend you, commend you, commend you for last Sunday. We had a tremendous day. Glory to God. We had a tremendous day. Thanks to the saints of God that worship here. Mother Diola, would you come? Thank you.